install the decking boards, uh, which I didn't video. Simple process. We pull up the old, old uh, decking boards and we just put down new ones. Uh, the structure of it was pretty solid. Uh, I sisted up a couple of the, uh, the uh, floor joists, but uh, other than that, uh, it's a pretty solid deck. It's even more solid now that we put the new decking on it. And uh, today we're going to uh, build our, our railing system in uh, a very inexpensive way. We're going to do a uh, uh, 2x4 top, 2x4 bottom, and we're going to have uh, round spindles. Next step is I am going to start cutting my uh, all of my rail boards, my top and bottom rail. Uh, that way I can get them all pre-cut and I can start drilling holes in for my spindles. Always remember, you got to wear your safety glasses. These are actually uh, safety glass readers uh, since I can't see anything. And it would be easy for me to get readers that are also safety glasses and seem to work out great. getting one of these speed squares, especially just do basic cuts with. I mean, this would do a lot more things as far as um, figure out, you calculate your stair rails and your step, step height, and step height, and tread height, and tread length. Uh, I basically use it for a straight edge. It's just easier. You go right on top of the 2x4, draw a quick line, and you're all set. Uh, I'm not that advanced to figure out how to use the rest of these things, but it works for what I need to do. So I got my railing on my drill press and I measured three quarters of an inch into the center and I put a screw down a scrap piece of wood in the background, background here. So when I put my rails in, um, I'm going in exactly three quarters of an inch from, from where I need to be. Um, I did a test with a piece of scrap wood, so I took a piece of two by four that I had laying around and I, I drilled a uh, paddle shift, I think this is a three quarter inch a three-quarter inch hole to the proper depth. I figured out how deep I needed to go so my spindles can work out with my top rail and I get a 27 inch uh, rail from top and bottom. So we're going to start drilling these and then go along with it. So I am just going to test See how deep you are. Just under an inch. That's exactly where we needed to be. And that's where my scraps are. Okay, we're good. So we're going to continue on doing the rest of these all the way down on all all six uh, railings. All right, guys. So I got my railings drilled uh, with the proper diameter hole uh, that my spindles will fit into. Uh, got it all lined up here, so I'm going to cut a few spindles right now, and I, I know I mentioned uh, doing this on a budget, so, you know, if you go to one of the big box stores, they have these pre-made railings and all fancy and all done up and, you know, they're over the top expensive, so one of the ideas I had was to go into the electrical department, so I got a pole, it's the, uh, the EMT, the uh, electrical conduit. It's half inch. Um, this is a 10 footer. So I'll take those and I'll cut those into 22 inch pieces, which is what I need to get a 27 inch rail height uh, that'll work with my railing. And one of the easiest ways to cut these is I, uh, I invented a jig. I have very high ceilings in my garage, so I can slide the whole 10 footer in here and slide that in there and get my grinder and 
and just grind off top. I'm going to do a few now and I'll show you how I do it. Boom, there you go. Got my grinder. It's uh, got the rigid diamond blade uh, meant, meant to cut steel or metal. All right, close your ears. grinder just just uh, take off all the sharp edges and clean them up a little bit no one's gonna see that part even if it's rough cut a little bit because that'll actually be in the railing and no one will even notice it so now uh, let's clean these up and then let's let's um, test fit top bottom rail see how they look and there you have it um, got my spindles cut and I think these are off in here Not bad for an amateur. So I'm gonna I'm gonna finish up sizing up the rest of them, and then I'm gonna stain these before I actually assemble them. Um, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that. The idea is to put threaded rod through a couple of these, so everything is kind of compressed and held together. Uh, I've got some uh, quarter twenty threaded rod. I'll drill a hole through probably the second to the end on each side and then one in the center. That way it'll, it'll hold everything together. So I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so now that we have our 2x4s drilled and stained, we're going to locate the center hole that we're going to drill a hole through and we can run a threaded rod through it. I believe it was uh, 42 and a half with our center. That looks about right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, perfect. So we're going to draw our holes here, both top and bottom. And we're going to put one on each end too, so I'm going to draw these last two right here. get a little force in a bit and uh, just hollow that out a little bit. So this can actually turn into like one of those down to shore games trying to get the um, threaded rod through two holes through the spindle. It's very challenging, but it can be done. Just gotta finagle it a little bit. There you go. There we go. So we get the other one in. There you go. Got it through. Now one of the reasons why I'm using the threaded rod is I want to eliminate putting a block 
under um, under the bottom part of the railing. Eventually, throughout time, they start they start to sag, but with the threaded rod in there, at least it'll, it'll hold it all together and and uh, prevent me from having to put a uh, put a two by four block underneath to give it support. Just look a lot cleaner. All about looking clean. So now I got my nuts all the way through, I can cut the rest of these rods off. <clears throat> so we're gonna we're gonna put this uh, side rail on. As you can see, I, I did the front rail. I wanted to make sure it fit properly, which it did. <clears throat> I'll show you how that looks like. I'm gonna use two by four blocks. It's about a piece of two by four. So that'll give me three and a half inches off from the deck, which is pretty standard. And it gives me. Give me a um, I look like I'm a little high over here. Um, I'm going to square off the far end here, and I'll take this block out, and I'll I'll just position it by eye so it'll be just even with the post. I want to show an inch here, and then I'm just going to scribe a line so I can kind of stay within that line. So the next step here is I'm going to work on doing a top rail. Uh, I wanted to do something a little different. I saw another YouTuber, I think uh, it was uh, uh, Ninja Carpenter, I believe it was. He did a really cool thing. Instead of uh, miter cutting the corners to me, he, he, did a, um, he did a lap joint. And he extended the lap joint, so he cut, he cut the lap joint out with the top rail met together and then he extended it another inch past it. Very cool looking, very different. And whenever you do a lap joint like that, you don't have to worry about the miter separating, which happens with a lot of decks that have a 45 miter on the corners. Throughout the year, they, they, they tend to separate. And um, you know, it starts to look a little shabby, but doing it this way, both pieces lock in and they have no place to go. Hey John. John, my neighbor is a uh, he's a master carpenter, so he is my Google. If I have any issues, I knock on John's door and he gives me some um, very good advice on what to do. So while I, while I have this on my uh, work area, I'm gonna give it a little round over bit just to get rid of that rough, uh, you know, sharp edge look and kind of smoothen it out a little bit.
So this is a lot more work, but the results are nicer. Takes a lot of work to be different. It may even impress my neighbor John, the carpenter. So there you go guys. Oh, there are two lap joints. It's just gonna slide that right on top of it. Now the only mistake I did make is I actually cut um, the, the bottom top rail a little bit too much. So I got a little bit of play in it. But once I screw it down, I'll put some glue down, screw it down, and then uh, like any expert will do, I'll just get a little silicone, fill it up with silicone. The deck is going to be stained black anyway, and you'll, you'll never even notice it. But that's going to be the plan for that. But hey, for the first time uh, doing something like this, I think it came out pretty darn good. So the way I finished up the end was uh, uh, I measured an inch in on each side. And I did a 233 cuts, and I just uh, got my round over bit on my router and just gave it a nice little round. Look, I didn't, I didn't want to leave a straight edge, and I didn't want to leave a round edge. I wanted to have a little bit more of an interesting look to it, and I, I think that came out pretty good. So let me know what you think in the comments. All right, guys, so there you have it. That's how I did my rails on my deck. Uh, pretty simple, a little tedious, uh, drilling all the holes for the uh, spindles and trying to make sure everything's lined up right. Other than that, I think I did a pretty good job for a, a DIY homeowner slash, you know, try to do everything I can. Um, but I hope you guys learned something. Uh, if you have any comments, I'd be uh, very grateful to hear from you. And any suggestions and any tips uh, from the professionals out there, I'm very open to uh, learning more. Uh, so please feel free to comment. Uh, I'll put a link down below for everything that I used uh, to do this. Um, with, the, uh, with the spindles, which is the uh, uh, half-inch uh, AMT uh, electrical conduit and uh, anything else I may have used. So my next project is I'm going to build a skirt around the whole deck, uh, three sides. So stay tuned and uh, look for that one. And thanks for joining me.